I remember uh, Dad Nelson, P.C. Nelson. He was a Baptist minister for 32 years. Then was he, you know, the doctor said he's going to have to take off his limb. And then he's filled with the Holy Ghost, spoke to other tongues, became Pentecostal, full of gospel. March of 19, April of 1942, I was attending a convention and uh, he was there and spoke in the afternoon. In the fall of the year, October of that year, he went home to be with the Lord at age 74. That's the last time I ever heard him. He spoke on the subject of faith. And in the course of his message, he said this. He said in 19, well, before 1900, he said there in Chicago, I saw John Alexander Dowie, and I think that's one thing then when the doctor will take off his limb, God began to remind him of. I saw John Alexander Dowie in the presence of several of we denominational preachers, he's Baptist minister at the time, and several medical doctors. I saw him, the doctors had brought a woman who had a malignant growth on the side of her face. He said it had grown out there almost as big as another head and go back in her mouth, blue, purplish looking mass. And what they treated with then was put something on that was poisonous and they couldn't put anything on that because it's inside her mouth. She'd get too much poison to kill her. If they'd treated otherwise, you know your liver would absorb a certain amount of poison. But he said, I saw. Dr. Nelson said, I saw John Alexander Dowie reach out and take hold of that malignancy and say in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and strip that off of that woman's face. And he said those doctors there present immediately begin to examine. And they said there's brand new skin there. It's just like baby, like a newborn babe's skin all over the whole side of her face. Now, when talking about the ministry of John Alexander Dowie, uh, Brother Nelson said you couldn't follow Dowie's doctrine, but he said you can follow his faith. You see, he, he come to realize some of the authority that belonged to him. You see, a person, we need to realize this, can be wrong in their head and right in their heart. And reading since then after Dalby, I think he is wrong in his head about several things. But he was right in his heart. And one thing is he'd come to realize a certain amount of authority in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Brother Nelson said, don't tell me you can't follow the faith of a man like that. He said, don't follow his doctrine, but you can follow his faith. Well, now Dalby was born in Scotland. He is educated, graduated at the University of Edinburgh. Uh, actually, he was a lawyer to begin with. And he moved down to Australia and later became a minister. He said that he crossed the ocean 14 times in his life. And many times. See, they, 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 they didn't have all the, you know, because we, we're talking about before 1900 when he crossed. They didn't have all the means of communication and navigation so all that we have today. And he said uh, that uh, every time that they cross, many times they were troubled, you see, the sea was troubled by storms. Well, they had no way of knowing it's there, like we do today, that they could change the direction, perhaps, and move a different way. But he said uh, every time a storm came up, he just did what Jesus had done. He rebuked the storm, and it would cease. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Now, we shouldn't be amazed at that. Jesus said in John 14, 12, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do. Amen. Amen. He rebuked the storm and it ceased, didn't it? Amen. Amen. Well, now Jesus didn't say that only a select few would be able to do the works that he's doing. He spoke of those that believe on him. Amen. See, we have authority because we're Christians. Amen. This authority becomes available to us because we're seated with him. So Dalvey did the same thing that Jesus did when there was a storm. I remember when I was bedfast, and I took my bed in April 1933, and on New Year's Day at 405 North College Street, city of McKinney, Texas, and on New Year's Day, we moved. My grandfather owned several houses in different parts of town, and he decided that we'd move into one of his houses. So he asked the people to vacate and they had vacated and he had redone the inside of the house and painted it outside. And on New Year's Day, 
was a holiday, but we moved on that day because he is off from work. Well, they waited till everything to move me because I'm bed fast. And they waited till uh, all of the uh, all the other furniture gone, put up in different rooms, and put a different bedroom suit in my my bedroom. And uh, then before they came and got the last load of furniture, because they were made several trips just there in town. Mr. Jimmy Dale had a moving company, and he just had one of these bobtail trucks. He couldn't carry everything at once, and so they left my bedroom suit and the kitchen stuff till the last. But when just before they came for the last load. Then Mr. Harris and Mr. McDonald from Harris Funeral Home came in the ambulance. And they lifted me over on the stretcher, rolled me out, and put me in the ambulance. And I'll not go into that. You heard the story. You know, he said to me, he said, uh, young man, they tell me you've been bed fast for uh, about a year. I said, well, really about nine months. And he said, well, you haven't been outside the house. I said, no, sir. He said, well... We'll, it's a New Year's Day, not much travel. We'll just drive around a little bit if you want to through the residential section. I could at least turn my head and look out either side of the ambulance. And then he came. they came from the north going south down North Chestnut Street to the Courthouse Square, little town about 8,000, 500, 9,000 population. Courthouse set out in the middle of the square. Most all of the business there are around the square, a few businesses off about a block you know, on either way. And so we came there to the west side, going south on North Kentucky, to the west side of the square. I, I'm looking at the buildings there, and right on the corner of the square was Gamble's Drug Store uh, on, on the northeast corner, northwest corner. And then the next, next beside it was J.C. Penny Company. And next it was a little ladies' Modo Day dress shop. And next it was F.W. Woolworth. And next it was Bone Shoe Store. And then on the corner, the southeast corner of the west side of the square, you see, or, or southwest corner, there was a, a ladies ready to wear called the leader. And then he turned this corner and started down the south side of the square. And on the corner was TPNL, Texas Power and Light Company, their main office where you went to pay your light bill. Next it was Perkins Dry Goods Store. Then about that time, I turned my head and looked at the old courthouse sitting in the, the middle of the square, and there was a voice said to me, look at it, good boy. The last time you'll ever see it, you never thought you'd ever see it again because they said it was going to die, you see. Look at it, good. This is the last time you'll ever see it, and you never would see it, wouldn't have seen it this time if it hadn't been for the kindness of Mr. Harris. And I didn't know what I knew now, know now. I didn't even know why I did it. But the Holy Ghost is leading you a lot of time when you don't even realize it. But I remember I clenched my fist so that my fingernails dug into my hands. And I said, yes, I will. I'll come in the flesh and I'll stand on this courthouse square and see these buildings in the flesh. I didn't really realize I was prophesying. It came to pass. It came eight months later. Eight months later. Blessed be God. Second Saturday. The second Saturday. Uh, of August 1934, I stood on that courthouse square with tears streaming down my face and said, Mr. Devil, I told you, I told you. Well, you see, without realizing that you, you, you got over into the edge of that authority, without really, but Paul, how much more can you walk in it when you realize the, the full revelation, the eyes of your understanding being in light? Amen? Amen? Now, what I started to say is, though, we moved from 405 North Condy Street down to 903 East Greenville Street. My bedroom is right up front. My bedroom is on the southwest corner of the house. So in the spring, then, when the storms began to come, the tornadoes began to come. Here in Texas and Oklahoma, you know, Oklahoma and Texas. And, and uh, usually they'll come right out of the southwest. Uh, and so one day here came the storm. I didn't know everything I know now. But you could hear it just like a freight train to come in. And it looked like the wall was going to come in on top of me. And so I can't get up and get out of bed. I'm helpless. But I said to the Lord, Lord Jesus, when you was here on earth, you rebuked the storm and it ceased. You know I can't get up and get out of the way of it any more than out there in the middle of the ocean. Dowie could get up and get out of the way of it. And so I said, dear Lord, I'm your child. 
when the disciples were at sea and the storm came up. They awoke you, they rebuked the storm, and it left. Well, I know you don't want me to perish. I can't get out of here. This wall's about ready. I mean, it's just a vi- it's just a blowing in now, the wall of the room. It's ready to blow right in on top of me. I rebuke this storm in the name of Jesus. When I said that, almost to my amazement, almost immediately the storm stopped. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think at times maybe all of us have gotten in the edge of that without even knowing. I certainly didn't know what I know now. But we need to realize something about the authority that's ours and take advantage of it. Hallelujah.